Welcome back. So, uh, part two of our five-part discussion on biogeochemical cycles. Second big one, the remaining three, the hydrologic, sulfur, and phosphorus cycle. A little bit smaller. We can do all those in one video, actually. Um, but it's going to be nitrogen cycle. So, we just spent time looking at the inputs and outputs and the various places we find carbon. Now, we're going to do a similar exercise with nitrogen, another key uh, part of our bio, uh, biochemicals, okay? Um, <clears throat> so again, we're going to begin essentially with the atmosphere, even though theoretically it's a cycle with no beginning or end. But um, in the atmosphere, we have uh, a large, large, large quantity of nitrogen, right? So it's not that we're limited in the quantity of nitrogen, right? We're really limited in the quality of nitrogen. By quality, I'm talking about uh, getting nitrogen in the right form that plants can use, right? And then once it's in the plants, it can work its way through that food chain, much like energy does, okay? So, um, nitrogen gas, N2, that, that diatomic uh, molecule, okay, uh, is about 78% of our atmosphere, right? But in that form, not really useful to our living systems needs to be fixed, okay? Um, and I'm saying that <clears throat> not because it's broken, but the process by which we make it usable for plants and then eventually consumers is called fixation, all right? So to pull our nitrogen out of the air as nitrogen gas and put it into the soil, we call that nitrogen fixation. Okay? And what happens during nitrogen fixation is we are taking nitrogen gas and forming NH4, also known as ammonium. Okay? So, um, again, nitrogen gas becoming ammonium, okay, or NH4 is that process of fixation. And what does that for, you, for us? is um, they call nitrogen fixing bacteria. Okay. Alright, uh, so we've got bacteria present in our soil um, that can do this fixation process. They can actually take nitrogen out of the air as nitrogen gas and convert it to a form called ammonium, which is NH4. That ammonium then resides in the soil, all right? Now, there are two, essentially two varieties of nitrogen that plants can use. One of them is ammonium. So NH4, or, uh, this is ammonium, or NO3, which is nitrate. Okay, are both forms of nitrogen that plants can readily uh, absorb through their roots and assimilate into their tissues, okay? So, nitrogen fixation is a process by, by which bacteria present in the soil convert nitrogen gas into this form of, of nitrogen, or ammonium, which is one variety that plants can use, okay? Uh, and so, the ammonium, can go from the soil into plants, all right? Now, within the soil, remember we have these two types. We've got ammonium and we've got nitrate within the soil. So I'm gonna draw kind of an internal arrow here from soil back to itself here. Because this happens as the soil is we have ammonium, NH4, becoming NO3, okay? And that process is called nitrification. It's a little hard there. Okay. Uh, so again, ammonium and nitrate are the two forms readily usable by plants, right? Bacteria are responsible for taking nitrogen gas N2 and fixing it to become ammonium, right? In the soil is where that now resides. Now, uh, also occurring in the soil is this process of nitrification, 
which case ammonium is going to convert it to nitrate, right? which is also done by, guess again, bacteria. Okay, I believe there's also some fungus that can do this as well. Um, if you recall back in uh, chapter four, we talked about those mycorrhizal uh, symbionts that live with the, the plants that help the, the plants to absorb uh, nitrogen and stuff like that. So, anyways. So, bacteria can fix nitrogen to convert nitrogen gas into ammonium. Bacteria can also nitrify or carry out this process of nitrification, okay, to convert ammonium into nitrate. So, a couple things you're gonna have to remember. You're gonna have to recognize that as ammonia, and this is nitrate if you haven't had chemistry yet. Uh, just, just memorize that, okay? Um, so, now we have our two forms of nitrogen. The plants can easily absorb through their roots and assimilate. And interestingly enough, primary components in our chemical fertilizer, ammonium nitrate. I mean, there's some phosphorus and other stuff in there too, some other key nutrients, but that's a big component of our chemical fertilizers is ammonium nitrate, two types of nitrogen plants can use, all right? Uh, so, once we have these key nutrients into the soil, okay, you can then absorb it. So, this is called assimilation. All right, so assimilation is referring to the process by which plants, all right, through their roots, right, so we get water, right? So one of the primary things water does for our plants is it allows them to transport soil nutrients through capillary action up into their systems, in which case their cells can then take over, break things down, reassemble them, and so on. Uh, so in the case of our nitrogen uh, nutrients, ammonium and nitrate, okay, uh, we can absorb those into our plants, and then the plants will assimilate the nitrogen into their tissues. Now, what does nitrogen need for in our, our body systems? Um, well, probably several things. Probably the most important one for you guys to remember is amino acids uh, and DNA, right, are both composed uh, with, with nitrogen as a primary component, okay? Uh, and so obviously DNA is important. That's our whole genetic code, right? Nothing's gonna happen in your body without that. But of course, amino acids, which are the building blocks for proteins, and pretty much every tissue in your body is composed at least primarily of proteins. Uh, nitrogens are an important part of those amino acids that we use to build our proteins, okay? Uh, so nitrogen, pretty, pretty important nutrient that comes in, okay? But again, there's a lot of nitrogen out there, not usable in this form, right? So it needs to be fixed. We have nitrogen-fixing bacteria, which can um, convert the nitrogen gas into ammonium, right? Then that nitrogen now resides in the soil because it's the bacteria in the soil that do that, right? Some of that ammonium can be assimilated into plants directly. Some of that ammonium can be go through the nitrification process by which it's converted to nitrate. Both nitrification and fixation are carried out by bacteria. Now, now that we have both ammonium and nitrate in our soil, the plants can then assimilate that nitrogen, right, and go through cellular processes to break it down and reassemble it to form uh, new cells and form proteins because we need nitrogen to, to make amino acids. All right, so now it's in our plants, right? So once it's in our plants, assimilate it in, we can now uh, pass it on up to the food chain, right? So we are going to just draw some arrows here showing the plants, then moving on to our consumers, right? So we have some more assimilation happening. Okay, and again, in this case, we're simply eating the nitrogen, all right? So plants take nitrogen out of the soil, assimilate it into their tissues. We eat plants or things that eat plants as food. We break it down, we assimilate that nitrogen into our amino acids and our DNA and so on, all right? So we have this assimilation process. Now, if we call back to our chapters four and five discussion is, this was energy, right? 
this would be that the sun going into plants, plants to consumers, and then the energy would essentially leave our system, right? Radiate out of the space and be kind of rendered unusable for the most part, all right? Matter, on the other hand, cycles, right? We're reusing that same matter over and over again because for the most part, we're a closed system on Earth when it comes to matter, all right? So, where do you think the nitrogen after it passes through our food chain ends up going again, all right? Uh, now, you're probably right in thinking that some of it's gonna end up back in the atmosphere, okay? But we also have this sort of internal loop that sends nitrogen back to the soil. So we're, and those two processes are, are a little different, so they have different names, okay? So, I'm gonna take a green arrow. I haven't done any green arrows yet, right? Uh, so, we're gonna draw arrows from our consumers back to our soil and we're going to include plants in that, okay? Because it's the same process that returns nitrogen from both plants and animals back to the soil again. And that process is called ammonification. Okay? And essentially what we're doing is um, it's part of that decomposition process. So our, uh, our bacteria and fungi are primary decomposers out there. When animals, plants, whatever, die, right, and decompose, the carbon, as you recall, ends up getting returning directly to the atmosphere. The nitrogen actually becomes ammonia again. Right? So as we decompose, our decomposing bacteria return nitrogen back to the soil as opposed to directly back to the air um, often, okay? And the form that it takes back in the soil again is ammonia, in which case it could be assimilated as ammonia or go through the nitrification process again to become nitrate. So we have this little internal cycle. You know, once we get ammonium into the system, we can create Nitrate, or we can use the ammonia directly for assimilation. It goes to the food chain, things die, return ammonium back to the soil, and that cycle can just repeat itself, okay, with or without this fixation process. So we kind of have this little internal cycle that doesn't involve the atmosphere, all right? Now, if this was the case, if we left it just like this, what would happen to our nitrogen in the atmosphere over time? We'd see it decrease, 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 because all the nitrogen from the atmosphere would just end up in this internal loop. So that's not what's happening. So there must be some sort of process that then puts nitrogen back into the atmosphere again, okay? And that process, right, actually goes uh, from our soil back to the atmosphere again, okay? And we call that, we go, Draw it right here. Okay, denitrification. Okay, and with denitrification, what we're actually doing is we're taking nitrate and converting it back to nitrogen gas. All right, um, actually maybe I'll write it this way. I don't want to confuse you guys. So in this case, our nitrate ions that exist in our soil, right, are being converted back to nitrogen gas and returning them back to the atmosphere. And that's how we maintain that balance with the atmosphere and the soil, okay? So again, quick summary. Almost 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is not a very usable form of nitrogen for biological systems, all right? So luckily we have bacteria, right, uh, present, which can convert the nitrogen gas that's in the atmosphere into a usable form for plants, which is ammonia, all right? And at which point that nitrogen resides in the soil. Right? The ammonium in the soil can be directly assimilated to plants or can go through a nitrification process, remaining in the soil in this case, uh, to become nitrate. 
It's two forms, ammonium and nitrate. It can be used by plants, are absorbed into plants through the roots, right? Plants then go through some cellular, rest, uh, cellular processes, digestion essentially, to break down those nitrogen compounds, build them or assimilate them into plant tissues, after which consumers can then eat that, that same nitrogen, uh, break it down, assimilate it into their tissues. When plants and animals die, we decompose, right? And so during decomposition, the nitrogen is part of our amino acids, proteins, whatever, is ammonified. Essentially, it re returns to this ammonium form. It's put back in the soil, all right? Uh, once in the soil, it can be nitrified. It can be assimilated and go back in. So there's our internal cycle. Or we can denitrify that uh, nitrate in the soil and turn it to nitrogen gas. And again, I forgot to label this, our bacteria friends take care of that process for us so we don't get excess nitrogen in our soil. And there is our process. We have nitrogen fixation, we have nitrification, we have assimilation, we have ammonification, and denitrification. So you have five names, five steps. Your job is to know what happens during those five steps. All right? Um, so first of all, what is the name? And what's being converted to what and what's doing it, all right? Uh, and then of course you need to also understand that nitrogen is an important part of our DNA and also an important part of our amino acids that we use to build proteins, all right? That's it.